We're joined by Dr. Sam Gambier from Stanford University. Congratulations on being awarded the Kassen Prize. Can you tell me a little bit about what your plenary will cover? It's a pleasure to be here to talk about the talk that I'll give. Um, this work that I'm going to focus on is a 20-year journey from the basic bench to clinical applications. It will be based on a new technology that is called reporter gene technology. The idea is that we develop genes whose products can be imaged. So we introduce genes into your cells, then those cells make protein products from those genes, and those gene protein products allow us to image those cells. It has been a long journey to develop how to do this, and now, with the advent of immunotherapies for cancer, we're able to take these technologies and track, for example, what T cells in your body are doing as they home to cancer cells and try to destroy those cancer cells. What advancements are just around the corner in this area? So a lot of things are happening right now, especially because cell therapies are accelerating. As you may know, in cancer, the promise currently is that instead of treating with chemotherapies, we have the ability to treat with your own immune cells. How do we take your own immune cells, reprogram them to do a better job in treating cancer, but then as we put them back into you, how do we image what they're doing? So the future for nuclear medicine in this area is to be able to develop better ways to track such cells, to be able to develop ways in which to track the cell state are the cells truly ready to destroy a tumor? Are they engaging certain genes that have to come on before they can attack a tumor? All these approaches are allowing uh, what will be a terrific improvement in immunotherapies. Secondly, another important area is how we can use these technologies to actually improve what will occur with healthcare in general. I will talk briefly about an early cancer detection pill, a pill that we've been developing that you would take. That pill would lead to a change in any cancer cells in your body so that those cancer cells will make a molecule that will end up in your urine. Now you would go to a smart toilet in your home and that toilet would detect a molecule coming out in your urine which would tell us that you potentially have cancer somewhere in your body. That would then lead to an imaging test that would see if that smart toilet was correct. All these things seem a little bit far off, but in the Bay Area where I'm from at Stanford, we're developing the next generation of technologies that will end up in your house and will end up, in this case, keeping you healthy for longer periods of time. That's amazing. What are the biggest challenges that you face? Lots of challenges in any area of research. I often remind my students it's called research, not search. There's a good reason the prefix re is in there because you have to iterate over and over to improve the technology. For example, in the early cancer detection pill I'll talk about, there are a lot of regulatory challenges to getting such a pill approved by the FDA to show safety of such an approach that will allow cancer cells to reveal themselves by a simple marker they would make that's revealed in your urine. There's also a lot of challenges to the clinical trials. How do we carefully select people, in this case high-risk individuals that are at risk for cancer, how do we recruit them in a quick enough fashion to be able to do these kinds of tests so that we can determine just how safe and useful these new approaches are. So that's another challenge that we face in the road to getting these technologies widely available and used. What do you think gene therapy will look like in the next 10 to 20 years? So gene therapy is a very important component of healthcare that has stalled over the last several decades because we've had difficult challenges in delivering genes. It's one thing to fix a cell by delivering a reparative gene into that cell, but how you deliver that gene to many such cells all throughout your body is a very difficult challenge. We think that those challenges are now starting to be met. There's new delivery techniques that are helping us get genes to the right places in your body. That will allow us to treat rare diseases, which are due to a defective gene, cancer, 
which is in fact in many cases related to genes that if we could correct would lead to the ending of that cancer. So there's a whole resurgence, I believe, that is occurring in gene therapy. And another driving factor is that the fundamental genetics of what we're learning of how to fix and repair small segments of DNA are allowing us to, in fact, edit your genome, but edit it in a living cell, and soon, hopefully, edit it in a human. These are not two, three years away. These will still take decades to play out, but we believe the key hurdles have started to be solved that will allow gene therapy to be successful. And I understand that you and the researchers from your lab are going to be presenting interesting research in the meeting. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So all the areas I'm talking about, we will present elements of it. So one example of something we're presenting is a new reporter gene that works in the human brain. How do we deliver genes that will eventually treat diseases like Parkinson's, like Alzheimer's, and then how do we develop imaging genes that will let us determine if those therapy genes are working properly. So one of the students in the lab, Tom Haywood, who's a chemist, will present a new research project in which we've developed a good reporter gene for the human brain. Another example of a presentation in the lab is by Israt Alam, who will present work related to a new way to track immune cells in your body. In this approach, a reporter gene is not used. We've developed an imaging agent that when injected in your body can find activated T cells anywhere in your body. These activated T cells may be fighting an infection. They may be involved in fighting the area she'll talk about, which is related to cancer. They may be involved in fighting something known as graft versus host disease. But the key approach here is that an imaging agent can find any activated T cell, an activated immune cell, so that we can follow the course of disease and hopefully treatment for that disease. Dr. Gambier, thank you so much for joining us and congratulations again on your award. Thank you so much. It's great to be here.